people know, but in Mexico City, the day before the Olympics launched, there was a massacre of students who were also organizing, protesting their rights for very basic human needs. And so my question is about, did you, did you all know about this? Because it was so covered up. They literally, I mean, the streets were drenched in blood. My mother was there. And they they covered it up. It was a huge, it was just a huge blackout as to what happened. Justice was never restored, and a lot of and a lot of the the people in trying to persecute the, the government who carried out this action said that they didn't have any laws to which to persecute the people in, responsible. So it never got it never got taken to court. So my question is, was that did you all know about this? And, yeah, so it actually happened uh, 10 days before the Olympic Games. They killed, they said, at one time, they said they killed 50 students. Then they went up, they said we killed 80 students. Then they went up to 150 students. Today, they're up to 350 students. One day, the truth will be told, they killed close to 2,200 individual lives. 2,200, and not only did they kill them, it's just like this young lady said, they covered it up. Three quarters of America don't even know that those students lost their lives. They had so many individual bodies until they took the bodies and they dumped it into the furnace. And when they couldn't put any more in the furnace, the United States sent their ships over there, their they little Coast Guard cutters or what have you, and took it out, the rest of the bodies, to the ocean and dumped them. Then they turned the guns on the rest of the people and told them, say, move up to the mountains until these games are over and don't come down until they're over. But then if you sit back and you think about a video that came on, a documentary that came on a while back called Fist of Freedom. If you didn't see this video, you need to see it. Because there's one old individual there that represented the United States Olympic Committee. He stated on there that we told the Mexican government, handle your business and we will be at the Olympics in Mexico City. The next day, the Mexican government handled their business. It slaughtered those individuals. But remember what I said, there's rules and regulations. You had to make sure you're within the rules. Now, relative to myself and other individuals that was involved in those Olympic Games, that was heavily involved in the Olympic Project for Human Rights, 30 some odd years later, I think 35 years later, Dr. Edwards has been pursuing to try and get our confidential information to file, which they fought for 30 some odd years against us getting it. And I remember one day, just uh, maybe five years ago, Dr. Edwards gave me this envelope. He said, hey, John, here's some interesting reading. Get time reading. I sat in my house and had it there for two, two, three months. And then one day I just happened to open it up and I started reading and I was spellbinded by what I read. Because the government had a plan in conjunction with the Mexican armed forces that they would get us to go down. When I say us, talking about Dr. Edwards, Tommy Smith, D. Evans, and John Carlos to go to Mexico City, tie in with the students in Mexico City, and then we would all perish at the same time. That's the end of the program. But the bottom line is, when I tell everybody here, and I tell them in New York and everywhere else I go, that you have, you guys need to become more unified. So like if John Carlos go, that don't stop the show. Any one of us step down, it don't mean nothing because all of us are on the same program. We're on the same line. This, this instance is taking place. It's an organism. New York is a vital part of the organism. Chicago, vital part of the organism. Oakland, California, vital part of the organism. We have to unify ourselves and have the same mindset. So if they start knocking us off, that don't mean nothing. The machinery still going to get bigger. <laughs> Just very briefly, that fight in Mexico City for justice or what are called the martyrs of Tlatelolco Square, that fight is ongoing. The families of people who lost their lives, they have never stopped fighting for justice. And we have it on our docket, we have it on our goal that we are going to bring John's story to Mexico City. And we are going to speak with the family members still fighting for justice for those loved ones lost to make sure that the ghosts of Talata Loco Square haunt the murdering bastards who put them in the ground in 1968.